everybody! So today we're going to be talking about the second episode of Fear the Walking Dead and this one was called So Close Yet So Far. I actually just was able to watch the episode. Dan and I were actually in Puerto Rico last week on vacation. We had a really good time. It was really neat going to Puerto Rico. I don't know if any of you guys are from Puerto Rico, but if you are, it was a really nice time for us. We had a really good uh, experience with a lot of the different things that Puerto Rico has to offer. And it was just a really nice time to finally get away for a little while and go on vacation, which was really nice. But now that we're back, I was able to watch the second episode, which I really enjoyed. I really thought that this was a good leading up episode. And I think that that was what it was supposed to be, right? Um, to so close yet so far. So as we see, you know, throughout the episode, we're kind of getting some of those walkers. We're, some, we're getting kind of a little bit of the apocalypse starting, but we know based on the fact that we're watching The Walking Dead as well, that they are way far away from even understanding the full potential of this apocalypse and, and what it will bring. So I think that's kind of where this episode was supposed to be placed within within this story and uh, so let's talk about it a little bit. We see at the beginning of the episode, it does, you know, start off exactly where we left off in the last episode where, you know, we have um, Madison, Travis and Nick are understanding that they're dealing with something really weird and really scary and terrifying. Now, not only does Nick understand what's going on, but now we have more people that actually understand that there are walkers that exist now. So it's very interesting. They want to try to stay together, of course, but they realize that they're going to have to do some things apart to be able to get everybody together, right? We've got, you know, clips of police officers and just general civilians stocking their trunks up with a ton of water. Whatever the family does split up a little bit and Madison has to go to the school right, to get Nick some pain medicine just so that he can stop going through withdrawal at the house. We see that um, the one kid that she has been counseling, he is there trying to stock up on a ton of food because he knows it's just gonna be bad. And we're starting to see different people turn into walkers. I feel like there's been more episodes than just two episodes, but the last episode, the first one, um, you know, they tried to scare us a little bit with the principal possibly turning into a, a walker, but in this episode, he does. And it's just interesting to see because, you know, we see that they all understand that there are these walkers now that exist. You know, we see that she's still confused when the principal's coming right at her. It's somebody that she's probably known for years and years. And he's coming at her and, you know, he doesn't necessarily look super sick, right? Because they still don't, they don't look like they're rotting. They're not these nasty zombies yet, right? They're, they just turned into them. Their skin is still normal. It's not d absolutely foul and disgusting looking like we're used to seeing in the current state in The Walking Dead. She's just staring at him like, hey, hey, like, hello, like, what's wrong with you, right? That's just not normal and somebody that would act that way, but they just don't, they cannot almost comprehend what's happening. And then once he finally starts attacking her, you know, then that's when she finally realizes and her instincts go in to be able to be like, oh my gosh, like I have to kill this thing. He almost kills the other kid, um, you know, who's trying to like, you know, stab him in the head with a knife, but you know, still it's too strong. Like his skull is too strong. His skin is still too intact to be able to just have a knife go through. We're used to seeing what, like Rick and Daryl and all those people just stabbing these walkers in the head and their knives just go right in and they kill them immediately and all that stuff. But now what we're seeing is it's actually really hard to do that. It may make it easy looking in The Walking Dead, but in reality, maybe it's not so easy, especially when this apocalypse started. You know, and so, but Madison, her, her instincts kick in and she does end up killing him officially, you know, with that fire extinguisher or whatever. So I think she finally realizes. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, you know, whenever they were coming back to the house originally, like Madison and Nick, you know, they saw their neighbors across the street and it was very interesting because, you know, they're like, oh, we're going to tell them, you're going to tell them about this. And it's like, well, how do you tell somebody about it? Right? How do you tell somebody that doesn't understand what's going on? Because Nick, just a day or two ago, right, he's in the hospital and they're saying, well, you know, maybe you're crazy. You know what I mean? Maybe you're hallucinating. I don't believe this. So how are you going to make somebody else believe something so ridiculous? And then they also see their other neighbor, the guy who was, um, you know, putting 
water into his car, he starts coughing. So you're like, mm, that's not going to work out well, right? Uh, and then we also see Alyssa and her uh, boyfriend, Matt. She's really upset because he's really sick and doesn't realize he's been bitten. And they leave him alone. They don't do anything to him. So do you think he's maybe going to be back later on? in the season, maybe he'll kill her or something like that because they didn't end up like hurting him in the head. So he's obviously going to turn into a zombie at some point here. Like, do you say something like, Hey, um, I know you're getting ready for that birthday party. Oh yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm getting ready for it. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I don't know that that's really that good of idea because you know, people are dying right now from this virus and they're, they're coming back from the dead and killing other people and they're, they're eating them. Oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. I'll definitely close up, you know, and I'll run away with you guys. Definitely. Yeah. I totally understand where you're coming from. No, that's not going to happen, right? No way. The question really is, you know, how are these people going to notify people? Or is this why the apocalypse really happens? Because people just don't want to believe. They don't understand. People aren't really necessarily letting them know, right? They seem like they're hiding a little bit of stuff, but you know, is that the necessary thing to do instead of causing absolute mass panic? I don't know. I mean, if I was a citizen, I would want to be notified of something to this magnitude, but can they really tell an entire population of people that this is what's going on? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Towards the end of the episode, you know, we see them, they're, they're split up. The families are split up. Travis had to go find his son who, you know, wanted to go to the protest and stuff like that. Doesn't really understand what's going on. They end up getting stuck in the barber shop, which, you know, because of the rioting and stuff like that, they didn't feel it was safe. I think it's a poor decision. Just, I mean, it's a good idea to get away from the riot and, and ride it out, but those people are turning into walkers. So how are they going to get out you know, of the barber shop? That's another question as we can see somebody's looking through you know, the gates at the barbershop and there is a zombie right there, a walker. So, you know, are they going to be able to get out? Is that going to be a problem? Who knows? We'll have to see, you know, what happens and how are they going to get out of there? Cause they clearly don't have any food or water at least stocked up. You know, they can't ride out the whole thing. And then at the end, we also see the neighbor finally turn into a walker. He must have died in his home and he reanimated and he was across the street and he ended up, I believe, killing the neighbor, at least the woman. You could see him attacking her. So I'm sure that she didn't make it. I have a feeling they're going to make some sort of noise or something. And that guy is going to end up coming to the house and that will be their first confrontation with this situation. So we're going to have to see what happens in the next episode. I think we're really going to start getting into more people turning into walkers and actually watching Los Angeles and civilization fall to the walkers. It has to happen soon. Uh, one of you guys let me know that there's going to be six episodes total in this season, which is perfect because I think that that lets them pace it appropriately based on it being a new show. I'll be posting another video after I watch the next episode, which is going to be on September 13th. Please remember to subscribe if you like the video and you want to hear what my opinions are about the show, what I think, what I think is going to happen and follow me for the rest of the season and we can kind of watch this together and kind of th see what each other thinks about the show, whether we like it or don't like it so far. I'm still into it. I think it's a really good show. Thumbs up the video if you like this discussion and I will see you guys next week.